I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're gonna to be talking about needy, desperate, low value behavior. Eek. Yeah. A lot of words. Pretty harsh, right? Yeah. Pretty harsh. And these were his own words. Uh, Cause we got an email coaching today. And this is somebody that described his own behavior as uh, needy, desperate, and low value. Let's see what we got. So today we have an email coaching that I thought would be helpful to you guys. Um, and sometimes we have to face things within ourselves that are really difficult to look at. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's in those insights that we truly learn to change and grow. And so sometimes, you know, hearing things that are tough can really motivate us to change our life. I agree. You I know? definitely think that looking at, let's say, the dark side of yourself can really show you a lot. Absolutely. And it's not always easy to do, but it's important to do if you're really going to change and going to be somebody that you're really proud of, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times the trauma that we've had in our attachment wounds or our attachment issues, it comes out with desperate behavior, which ultimately turns people off. Mm -hmm. You can bottom line it like that. If you don't improve your behavior, it will turn people off. Mm -hmm. And the people that it does turn on are not going to be the healthiest. Exactly. So you got to look at yourself, how you behave in relationships, and make changes that are going to attract people or make people want to be with you. The more you feel good about who you are and the more confident you become, the less likely that you're going to be manipulative or controlling or allow your anxiety to bully people or push them around, mm -hmm. right? And a, and a whole bunch of other issues, but you have to really get at the root of it, okay? So today I've got an email coaching. Uh, they said, thank you for taking the time and help in this difficult time of mine. I really appreciate your work that you and your team do. So he is in his early 40s and she is in her early 20s. So there's close to a 20 year age gap here, which, you know, age doesn't always matter, of course, mm -hmm. but I think it can matter more when the person is closer to their early 20s. Right. Right? Right. Like if you say somebody's 30 and 50, I mean, that's a big difference, but it doesn't feel as different as, you know, 22 and 42, where somebody, you know, at 22 doesn't really know themselves yet, mm -hmm. hasn't really formed their own career, still probably lives at home, is probably in college, right. or is somebody of 42, you know, has been in the dating world for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. You really want to look at the developmental differences between the two ages. That's what's really important here. Yeah, that's a big part of it. So they met in early January or the middle of January, and they broke up in early March. So it was quite a, just a little bit under two months mm -hmm. that they were together and it was a long distance relationship mm. so he says that they were unofficially engaged okay okay so they've been dating they didn't know each other like ahead of time they weren't friends for a long time and then decided to get engaged after a couple months they were talking about engagement after like under two months of dating long distance did he say how they met uh, let's see if we get there. Okay. Um, he said, I gifted her a ring and she accepted it and still has the ring. Question one is regarding my following video contents. I've been learning attachment styles, relationship needs and issues from your videos and other sources. Creating short videos to post on TikTok. This is something I'm finding very interested as I'm learning every day and want to share my knowledge to people since not people, not many people are saying the right things. 
Okay. So he's wanting to create a TikTok account uh, on what he's learning from our channel, essentially. And I think that he's doing this uh, to try and get her attention. It's possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the main reason he's trying to do this. Okay. So he says, I also uh, have travel vlogging stuff as well. My ex is my friend on TikTok. Still, she will be very likely to be watching the videos when I post. See, I really feel like he's created a TikTok account trying to teach her about what we know mm -hmm. to, like, prove to her, oh, I've changed yeah, now. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But yeah. this seems like some type of effort to show an ex that you've changed. Yeah. Now, mind you, they were only dating for two months, mm. long distance, and she's very young. So we've got a lot of major issues going on here mm -hmm. okay he says i need your advice because i'm wondering if the videos will show as manipulative passive attack way to convince her or sending energy towards her even though the videos are very positive no trash talking or not an attempt to attack or insult her so there we have it uh he sees mm -hmm. unconsciously that he is doing this to manipulate her, mm -hmm. right? And it's a very backhanded way because yes, those videos could be positive, but especially if you hadn't discussed a lot of what you're learning now in your relationship, people can be very aversive to hearing about attachment styles, anxious, avoidant. And so I wonder how that would be received, especially through a platform like TikTok. I'm thinking for myself personally, if I saw an ex on TikTok, talking about relational things, I would assume that it would have to do with the relationship that just happened. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that everybody would have that assumption, but I wonder if she would, and I wonder if that would make her feel some type of way. Look, I've been doing this for a long time, and you're not inventing the wheel, even though you think you are. I've seen many people try this strategy or similar things in the past. It simply doesn't re-attract an ex. Mm. It's not quite a grand gesture, but it's along those lines, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it, let me go on with more of the story. So no, I'm going to make this clear. I would not recommend anybody trying to do that. It's you're trying too hard to show somebody you've changed when you don't need to. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sometimes it's hard to articulate yeah. why things are do or don't work. Right. But I wouldn't do it. Right. And you might also receive the response from her thinking, where is all this stuff coming from, number one? And number two, where was this person when we were dating? Yeah. Because a lot of times people will have personas on social media that are very different from their real life persona. Yeah. And so I wonder if she might think that way. Ultimately, he knows that she follows him on TikTok. And so it's like, you know, that's why he's doing it because mm -hmm. she's on there. If she wasn't on TikTok and he was doing this as completely something separate, it might be different. As long as there was no hidden agenda, which there is. Right. Right? And that's the thing that I'm trying to steer him away from. Mm -hmm. Okay? He says, I'm in no contact, day 50. And having the power, control I lost, and attraction I damaged by chasing, pursuing her before and after breakup, and don't want to ruin this strong position at the same time. Okay, so I don't think English is his first language here. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that was a little tough to read. It. Um, but I'm trying to read it exactly how he said it. Because it is a little confusing to me. What I think he's trying to say is that now that he's in day 50 of no contact, there has been some time where he hasn't reached out, that he's regaining that power and control. Or so he feels. So that he has the strong position and he doesn't want to ruin it or he's afraid of losing that okay so he said please please watch the videos using the links below and advise me if i should post them uh well he did and i looked at them uh there were some tiktoks in there and i suggested not posting those things because i felt it was uh just him trying to manipulate and i've seen things like this happen before with various different uh, social media types, Instagram, whatever, so, uh, YouTube, whatever. It, I just wouldn't do it, okay? Um, I think you've got to look at the bigger picture to this situation, okay? Because there's more to this story. He says, we met online, matched great despite the big age gap. 
I went to her state to meet her and her family. So that's pretty fast. Mm -hmm. He's going to meet her family, and they they can't even have been talked for very long. Yeah. Because the whole thing was under two months. We had great weekend. Had sex. Her family loved me. Wanted to start wedding plans right away as mine. Okay. So I, I do wonder if they do come from a culture where this is more normalized, where let's say dating is not as present and it's more of a situation where you do get engaged and married pretty mm -hmm. early on. Yeah, we, and we do see that a lot. Mm -hmm. But even for, for those situations, this feels very rushed. It does. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they're not concerned about who this guy is or how much older he is or how much younger their daughter is. I mean, mm -hmm. because she is only in her early 20s. Right. And she's not only inviting him to her home, but also her family's home. Mm -hmm. And now he's meeting her entire family. That's a lot at stake right there. Yeah. This is too much too soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's go on here. She wanted to go slow. Which. I don't blame her. Yeah. I think that was a healthy thing. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to wait. Mm. So what's going on there? That sounds like anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to rate, wait. And you know what's interesting is that we hear very often from women uh, in their 30s that they have this biological clock, that they want to get married, that sure. they feel this pressure to get married. What we also see that we don't talk about as often is older men who do also want to get married. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't know what his relationships before this looked like, uh, but many times men do also have those goals for marriage and a family just as much as women do. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like this might be part of what's at play. Yeah. Uh, but pressuring her is certainly not going to help the situation. Right. Right. You're, you're trying to pressure somebody into an, a lifetime commitment. Mm. Uh, people are going to be turned off by being pressured into a, a going on a date, <laughs> yeah. let alone a lifetime <laughs> commitment. I feel pressured looking at the menu at Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he said, wanted her to commit and move forward with wedding plans. Gave her ultimatum one day. Hmm. Uh, does he, I don't know if he meant day one or, or one maybe day. Maybe at, at one point. Yeah. Uh, but. Very intense. Yeah, this is a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's no surprise for me and all that this is not working because mm -hmm. nobody wants to feel pressured to marry somebody they barely know. Right. Um, and also thinking about it practically, it seems rushed. Uh, a wedding is a big financial commitment too, depending mm. on you know how you want to go about things. And if they do come from uh, a culture that does these huge extravagant weddings, mm -hmm. then I would imagine that that would involve not only her finances, the family's finances, a lot of planning, which can be extremely stressful. And she's in her early 20s, you know, I'm sure wedding planning might not be at the top of her priority list right now. I mean, if you think about it here, we have a guy that meets a young girl long distance, live, uh, lives on the other side of the country, has a great weekend with her and decides, I, I want this forever. And if you don't want this forever and, and tell me right now you want it forever, we're done. Mm -hmm. Like who would say okay to that? Yeah. Right? I don't think very many people would say, okay, this I'm going to go along with this. Mm -hmm. So this is not healthy for me. I started showing needy, desperate, low value behavior also emotionally weak when she started pulling back okay so you're aware that your behavior was turning her off and that's great and mm -hmm. i know you're really enjoying learning about attachment theory and you're making a real effort to change that's fantastic i'm really happy about that but i don't want you to continue to try and manipulate and that's what i feel like you're ultimately mm -hmm. trying to do yeah he said, I made her feel she was the only source of my happiness by smothering her and being complacent as well. Mm. Well, I'm not sure how you were being complacent in such a short amount of time. That's also what I'm thinking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's not like they dated for a couple of years and he felt oh, I've been complacent. I mean, mm -hmm. it's only been under two months. How were you complacent in that short amount of time? I'm not, right. I don't know what he means by that. Mm. But surely she wouldn't have liked the smothering or feeling like he, she was the only source of his cap, happiness. That would have felt like pressure. Mm -hmm. She seems a dismissive avoidant, attention seeker. I don't know why she feels like a dismissive avoidant because, again, this is only a couple of months. 
Right, and it's very difficult to see somebody's attachment style in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. What we don't want to communicate to people as a channel, as a whole, is that attachment styles are a way to label people's behavior across the board for anything. Um, it does sound like, you know, she was overwhelmed. That doesn't necessarily mean, boom, she's dismissive avoidant. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe he was taking her cold behavior as, oh, she's a dismissive avoidant. Right. Because uh, she got so cold. But I think the reason she got so cold is the enormous amount of pressure she was feeling. And mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, I'm getting pressured and bullied into marriage and mm -hmm. I, to a guy that I spent a week with or a weekend or however right. long it was. Like, right. Uh, so I think he was just seeing that behavior. And I, I don't know that necessarily means anything to do with her attachment mm -hmm. issues. Exactly. And also remember people that attachment styles are not diagnoses. They are just the way that people learn to relate with others based on experiences with their caregivers from early on. Mm. And it does take some time to see that as we're talking about. And so what we don't want to happen is that you have these experiences with people with some behaviors that maybe we don't like, maybe that are alarming to us, and then we go off and label them as avoidant or yep. anxious. We really don't know until some time has passed, until you really get to form that bond and that connection, which takes months. Yep. Yeah, so uh, is it possible she's avoiding? Sure, it's possible. Uh, but just because she got cold uh, so quickly based on this situation, I would say that's not enough information. Mm -hmm. Let me go on. Same week she broke up, started giving attention to a guy who has been chasing her since then. So who knows how long she knew this other guy for? Mm -hmm. That's true. Maybe she knew him longer or maybe... She just knew that it wasn't working with you and started talking to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Her young age also may be playing a role. Well, I definitely think her age is playing a role. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's in her very early 20s and you're um, in your early 40s. And so that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you, you haven't been even talking to her very long. In my fifth no contact since the end of June. Fifth no contact. Earlier, I broke no contact every second, third, fourth, and fifth week as we've been connected on social media and got manipulated by her breadcrumbs and mixed signals. All right. So this is a bit confusing. Uh, he broke no contact five times, and he's saying he broke it like once a week. Now, you're saying you got manipulated. And that makes me feel like he's saying, she posted something that felt like it was about me, so I broke no contact. Or by her breadcrumbs. I'm not sure what those breadcrumbs could have been. Yeah, I don't, it, if she was reaching out, then I wouldn't consider that breaking no contact. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if she was the one reaching out to you all those times, no, I wouldn't consider that breaking no contact. Right. But if you were the one reaching out, that's when I would consider breaking no contact. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we don't know the details there, but... It's a little confusing. Right. And I also don't like the language of that, that she manipulated you into it. Um, we do have choices. All of us have choices. We have autonomy. We make decisions. And no contact is one of those things where you are setting a boundary with your ex as well. Yep. And so that means you don't reach out to your ex, regardless of what they post, regardless of how they try to provoke you, unless they directly contact you. That's right. Exactly. He said, my last no contact was for 33 days and wasn't paying any attention or validation on social media. I didn't wish her a happy birthday in June, but broke no contact and reached out at the end of June, right before she came to my state for her cousin's wedding. Okay, so he knew she was coming to mm -hmm. his state and she, he thought, I'm going to reach out and see if she'll want to see me. Mm -hmm. I didn't really want to miss the opportunity to meet and reconnect. So he was anxious. Mm -hmm. and so he's trying to push it and force things, right? She refused. She stayed nine days, but didn't want to meet me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to accept that. And it's hard, but you can't force somebody to do anything you don't mm -hmm. want to do. For the last 50 days, I haven't been looking at her social media stories. No attention, validation, or holiday wishes. I even posted only once on WhatsApp stories during this time, where I was posting frequently after a breakup. 
Okay. Oh, okay. So I guess he was being more active and he decided to cut back. Mm -hmm. She seems to be having the separation anxiety. Unfollowed me from Facebook and Instagram two weeks ago, but still following me on WhatsApp, which was our main uh, platform to communicate and TikTok. Okay, so I didn't hear anything that said that she had any separation anxiety, did you? No, but perhaps maybe he's thinking because she had some sort of movement by unfollowing him that that translated to her thinking about him, that's, possibly? Yeah, that's the only uh, thing that uh, he, he said that could be interpreted that way. Possibly. I didn't react and paying her zero time and energy. She seems in pain. Well, I didn't get anything that uh, she seems like she's in pain, but you seem like you're in pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it seems to me like you're in a lot of pain because of this. And so I would guess that you've had a difficult childhood and a lot of attachment issues yourself. Mm -hmm. And so you really got to get through that and get to a good place because I didn't read anything about her being in pain. Um, so I wonder if you're projecting how you're feeling and what you're hoping for in her behaviors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I might be completely wrong about this, but there is a tinge of this is my last chance. You're treating this as if this is your only chance for love, for family, for a happy life, and it's all in this one person who decided to end the relationship. That is not true. Mm -hmm. The world is big, it's expansive, there's billions of people out there, mm -hmm. um, and not to dismiss your relationship at all, uh, but it does sound like you are putting all of your eggs in this one basket and are hoping that this opportunity comes through or else nothing else will work, and that's just not true. Yeah. And that can create a lot of anxiety when you think that way, causing you to behave in a lot of these ways where you're trying to really preserve this. Yeah. Um, and. Even if she were to all of a sudden say she wanted to start working it out, we have a lot of major factors going on here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't know that she's got any of the skills or, uh, or is ready in any way to be a long-term life partner. You guys didn't date for very long. How are you going to tell me that you know she's ready to be a wife and mother or something like that mm -hmm. when you dated for under two months? Yeah. Like, you just don't know her well enough. It always takes time to get to know people. And this is what we tell you guys all the time. Okay. He says, but she doesn't reach out. Maybe because of her ego or she is still not sure. Well, I mean, you reached out when she came to your state and she didn't want to see you. Mm -hmm. So that's telling. Right. At this point, she's not making any forward movement that I can see. Mm -hmm. So you have to leave her be. All right, and at this point, you're in 50-ish days no contacts, it seems like, which is already about 75% of the relationship that you did have. And I don't say that to necessarily discourage you, but just to be realistic about the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't live in a bubble, and it's possible that she is talking with other people, exploring her options, really figuring out what she wants, which is developmentally appropriate in your early 20s at least in the Western world, yep. you know, you're encouraged to go out there, you're encouraged to meet people, to have friends, to focus on your career, and to really discover what it is that you want. So it sounds like she might be on that journey herself. I think so. And had you been more patient, you guys maybe will we're still be talking, mm -hmm. but because you put the ultimatum on her and demanded that it goes the way you wanted, that's why you're in this situation, or a big part of it. Right can't force people. You can't bully them. You can't give them ultimatums. Mm -hmm. Turns them off. That's just what happens. He said, should I keep completely ignoring her on social media and post less as possible like I'm doing now? I don't really think that's that important to the whole situation here. I agree. I think that's just such a minor point that you're overlooking the major issues. I mean, I... I, yeah, sure, I wouldn't wa watch her stories. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you want to post here and there, I don't think it's going to make a big difference here. Mm -hmm. Should I ever initiate contact again or wait until she reaches out? Do I have any chance of her coming back? Well, I mean, there's always the possibility of her coming back, you know, but you got to be realistic here. Mm -hmm. This girl didn't know you very well. 
Uh, you dated for a short amount of time, long distance. I don't even know how much time you spent with her in person. Maybe maybe it was a week or mm. a weekend. Weekend, it sounded. Uh, well, let's even say it was a week. Mm. But, you know, you did a lot of things that turned her off in a very short amount of time. And ultimately, she knows that if she reaches out to him, it's because this guy wants to marry me and he's not going to settle for less. Right. So that's a, a big hurdle to overcome. Mm -hmm. Like, this guy was trying to force me to say, yes, I'm ready to get married. And that's when things were going at their best. She said no. Mm -hmm. So now, after all these things have happened, and for her to take make this massive leap of, mm -hmm. yes, I want to marry this guy, yeah. I think it's a huge jump. And there's also a ripple effect that's that I assume is happening here. If she does live with her family, which is quite normal for people in their early 20s, mm -hmm. it's possible that her family also hears about this. And if they are from a different culture, a culture that very much values family, mm -hmm. then that could also have an influence. It's just a consequence of what happened. You know, she might be telling her family, I feel overwhelmed, I feel stressed out about this, I'm not sure about this person, I really didn't like how uh, he handled this issue, and so that just makes it that much harder um, in this type of a situation, unfortunately. Yeah. We all have to face consequences for our actions in life, mm -hmm. and a big part of that is how we treat the people that we date. And if you treat people in a way that is uncomfortable for them or turns them off, they're going to lose attraction for you. Mm -hmm. That's just part of life. And if you don't deal with it and you keep doing things like this, when anybody does things like this, they're going to get the same results. Mm -hmm. So you got to work on your confidence level and work through your insecurities on a deep, deep level and stop trying to force people or manipulate them by doing things like, you know, letters and or, you know, good reminder texts or mm -hmm. now TikTok videos, mm -hmm. stuff like that. It just usually turns people off. Right. And we encourage you to continue learning about attachment styles. And if at some point in the future you want to create content and share, that's amazing. That's great. But really identify why you are doing that. Is it to get a reaction from somebody else? Is it yeah. a manipulative tactic? And ultimately in this situation, it absolutely seems like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously it makes it a lot more clear when you know she follows you on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So tough situation but the most important thing is that you get to a good place within yourself mm -hmm. and you can do that you know we have the creative healing course huge huge impact it'll have for you mm -hmm. the workbooks we have over a thousand videos that you can watch for free get into therapy read books whatever you can to get to a good place so you learn to act more confident with people and don't do things, little things that wind up turning them off. Right. And it does take time to make changes. You can have all of the knowledge in the world and then still not be able to make actionable changes to make your relationships healthier. So you really want to make sure that you are implementing these relationship skills that we are teaching you, whether it is in your relationship with your family, whether it's relationship with friends, and of course, ultimately in your romantic relationships. Absolutely. So... Obviously, there was a lot going on in this situation, and hopefully it was helpful to you. If you want to get our help personally, you can do it on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Victoria is now available for Skype coaching. And I'm excited to talk with you. Just sign up on the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.